Sometimes you just need a meal that makes you feel good inside. And that is not what you think of when you think red beans and rice. At least it wasn't when I was growing up. I used to think, eek, not again. But uh, I'm gonna show you how to make this meal excellent. And we're gonna do it in a way that is very inexpensive, easy to prepare, only take a few minutes to get ready. So we'll jump right into it. Welcome to the kitchen. For starters, our key ingredients for red beans and rice are of course going to be red beans. And when I think red beans, I like to go for kidney beans. So I'm using a dark kidney bean. Now, if you're doing this uh, for a group of people, a family, let's say, of uh, maybe three, four, or even five, you'll wanna use a large can of this or maybe just two or three cans and then prepare your ingredients accordingly. I'm gonna make a small batch of this today. And so I'm just gonna use the one can of kidney beans. This has been drained and is ready to go. Um, this is gonna be a much better option than using something like uh, 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 raw beans that need to be soaked overnight and for a long period of time before they're ready to actually cook. So definitely consider this as, a, as your option. The other thing we're going to need is a good rice. Now I've got this already ready to go and if we taste this, nice and fluffy and soft, perfect. Consider using a good rice. There, there's lots of different options for rice out there. I like to use the Thai jasmine rice, and um, this is a long grain. I, I, I like it. It's just got a good texture to it, and you'll, uh, you'll want to maybe experiment with uh, some different rice options that are available in your local grocery store, see what works for you. The next thing then, to make this all come together. Onions, celery, and tomatoes. I'm using today some, another canned option here. Uh, you could get some regular tomatoes and dice them up. Perfectly uh, all right to do that. Uh, that's the long way to do it. I'm, again, I'm using the short method. So uh, using some organic diced tomatoes. Now, you used to be able to get cans of diced tomatoes with the celery and onions all together. I haven't been seeing them on the shelves a lot lately. Maybe some of you out there know the reason for that. But uh, in any case, it's better, I think, it tastes better if you use the raw ingredients and mix them in yourself. So I'm just going to use this um, can of diced tomatoes that I've, again, drained because I don't want the extra liquid. And we're going to put this into a pot. So we got our pot ready. In we go. Now for our raw ingredients. You're going to want for this size of a recipe about half an onion. And if you're like me, and you don't like cutting onions because they definitely get to your eyes, I've got a quick method for that. Here's a little trick. If you get a, uh, something like this, you can just put that onion in there and your chopping is done. And then I can just pour that right in to our pot. Voila, so easy. Don't make things harder on yourself. The next thing we're gonna need is about three to four celery sticks. Now these are prepped, ready to go, washed, cut off the ends, and then chopped up. So in they go. Now, if you don't like these ingredients, if you, if you find celery to not taste very good, for example, um, I still encourage you to try using it for this. It really helps with the texture and um, celery is really good for you anyway. It has a lot of good properties like silica, which is important for bone health and teeth and makes a great snack with peanut butter. Uh, but even so, <laughs> you can put this, my camera person is laughing at me <laughs> over that because she hates celery. But uh, I'm saying that still try it in this recipe because um, you won't really taste it after it's cooked down anyway. Now, this pretty much forms our base uh, with the rice, but to spice this up and make it actually a meal that's worth remembering and repeating again and again, 
you're going to want to add some meat and we're going to do some special things with that and our seasonings that are going to go along with this. Now we're turning our burner on to medium heat and we're going to heat up this pound of ground beef I've got prepared. Now for this size of a recipe, you probably only need about a half a pound of ground beef. I had a pound and I'm just going to go ahead and cook this all up and I'll use the other half uh, later on for something else. But um, we'll go ahead and chop this up, break it down. and let it cook. Now, I am careful on how long I let this cook. I don't want to cook it very high or very hot because I want it to be just barely cooked or slightly undercooked uh, when I finish it here because it's actually going to go into the pot with the rest of our ingredients and it will continue to cook in there. So I don't want to overcook the meat too much. Now, the other thing I want to do with this to make it really special is add some wine to it. I'm using a, a red wine and this is actually um, a cooking wine. There's a few differences between cooking wine and uh, wine that you would drink. Um, you could use either. In fact, uh, I've tried this also with regular uh, drinking wine and it's uh, very good. It has a, a more robust flavor to it, but uh, this is also a good option if you do have some cooking wine. One of the main difference though is that uh, cooking wine it's uh, well, it's going to be about 16% alcohol. We're going to cook that off, but it also has a higher sodium content than other wines. And so I'm going to use less salt in my recipe because of that. So keep that in mind. To, for the amount we're using, I'm using a, uh, a one third cup and we'll just fill that up. And in it goes. And that's going to be a nice marinade for this meat. Now for some spices. We're going to use some minced garlic. You can use um, your standard powdered garlic if you have it. That works just fine too. But I'm going to use about um, uh, one to two tablespoons. Or excuse me. I'm going to use about one to two teaspoons of this. And again, go as I've said in other videos, go less and work up until it's to your liking and taste. Now, another good ingredient to consider using is basil. It's optional, but it's a very, very uh, good savory ingredient and brings out a nice robust flavor in your, um, in your meal. So consider that. And I'm just going to give a dusting of basil. That should be plenty. Some pink Himalayan sea salt is a nice option. Remember, I'm using less than I would normally use because the wine has a high sodium content. And some black pepper to taste. That should do plenty. You can always add more later, so don't worry about um, specific amounts for any of this. And lastly, my, one of my most favorite ingredients of all, I use it in a lot of recipes, is some rubbed sage. And so I'm going to add this right in as well. Now you'll notice I've spiced these a little bit differently. It probably won't make too much of a difference, but to me, I have a, a particular thoughts on, on some of these. For example, the sage, this is a, a very delicate spice and I don't want to overcook it. Um, so I'm going to have it cook later on. So I'm adding it to uh, the pot with our vegetables. Um, and uh, the meat's cooking right away. Basil is a more robust leaf and uh, can handle a little bit more or longer time in the heat. And like a diffusion of tea, those flavors will, disper will disperse um, uh, better over a longer period of time with the meat cooking. I do want to turn this up though, and I'm going to put this on medium heat as well for our vegetables, and that will start cooking up. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take care of the meat here. Now, this is looking pretty good. So you can see there's still a little bit of pink left in the meat. That's just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and add this over to our other ingredients, another good reason to use a large saucepan 
when you're doing this, so it's real easy to add your ingredients. <clears throat> Turn that heat off and set that aside on a non-hot burner so it can cool down. Now this I'm going to stir up. Mix in real nice. Give you a, a look at how that's coming together. Now you could of course uh, cook this down as much as you like. Um, I like to have the onions and celery uh, a bit uh, crunchy still. Uh, but uh, you can, of course, cook them down as much as you like. Uh, but uh, just remember that you want to add the meat um, only after you've got your vegetables to the point where you're pretty satisfied with them. Um, and uh, that way you're not overcooking your meat. Uh, this is going to sit for a bit longer. And I'll go ahead and put a lid on this and let that just simmer and marinate. And we're almost finished. Now, while that's been simmering, I hope you took the opportunity to clean up as you go. It's a good habit to be in. So you, you've got the time, you're just waiting for this to, to simmer. Might as well go ahead and clean up your work area. So this is all ready to go now, and we can take a look at what we've got. I'm really satisfied with how this is turning out. See all those nice colors, and you can see the celery has started to become slightly opaque, which means it's getting softer and that it is... Uh, ready to go. That's a, that's a good indication when that, uh, when that celery starts to change color a little bit. So what we're going to do, uh, this goes good in a bowl or on a plate. I'm going to go ahead and take my plate and some rice. Take some of ingredients from our pot. Nice. We've got ourselves a nice, colorful plate full of nutrients, vitamins. This also makes a complete amino acid, so uh, it's very good for, for protein. Now you can, of course, modify this in a variety of different ways. This pairs very well with mushrooms. Um, the mushrooms also work well to absorb some of those juices if you want to marinate them with the wine as I did the meat and replace them with the meat so make this a completely uh, vegetable plate. That's an easy way to do it. Uh, of course, you can just make it like this and add the mushrooms as well. Of course, you can add all different other, other kinds of things as well. Uh, experiment with it. Play with it. This is a really easy recipe. It's hard to mess up. There isn't much you can do to make it taste bad at this point. Uh, let's give it a taste. Some that celery in there and beans. Mmm. This is gourmet. This is how you make it. Way better than growing up. <laughs> so, mm. anyway. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Rexport Education on our cooking special. This has been uh, Red Beans and Rice. I'm Ryan Shanahan, and stay healthy. I'll see you next time.